Hey, hey guys, it's your girl, Ginger Fox here, and we are going to be, uh, into some, getting into some more desire and decorum. Sorry I haven't done this in a couple of days or so. I've just been, like, pretty, just focusing on, like, streaming and shorts and stuff like that, you know? But we are back, chapter 8. Is, is that 3 re repute that was trying to say? After Miss Sutton's interruption, you are in the dining room responding to your father's letter. Mr. Harper stands by the door that Miss Sutton just fled through. I'll make sure she doesn't come back. You needn't stand like a meddling tiger. I'm quite safe. Only if you think Gossip doesn't kill, the Countess would be quite willing to use anything Miss Sutton tells her against you. You nod reluctant reluctantly. And turn your attention back to the blank leather in front of you. Touching quills, ink, you start writing. Dearest Father, I understand your concerns, but I have received no merry proposals yet. Until I have more news, you must please please me by standing firm against the Countess's ur <coughs> urgings that you change your will. I pray you not to listen to any rumors you might say against me. For now, I can tell you only that I am attending opera with the Duke of Carrington on Saturday. Your loving daughter, Lady Claire Fitzwater. You sign your na new name with a flourish, then spread sand on the ink to draw it. Now, to just get this Edgewater before anything, Miss Sutton might send. You soften the wax on the sealing stick, then press it into the edge of the folded paper, sealing it with the Edgewater crisp. Mr. Woods just took a meal before turning back for Edgewater. If you go to the stables now, you should be able to give him your letter to deliver before he heads out. You clutch your leather and rush out to the stables. Where you find Mr. Woods holding Briar's hand. It had been my hope that I would see you here. Does that mean you were thinking of me? Every day since your carriage left. As he glances up, Mr. Woods sees you and quickly drops Briar's hand. Mr. Woods. Don't worry, whatever you two get up in get up to in the hayloft, I'll keep your secrets. My lady, it's nothing like I meant Miss Dally no disrespect. She teasing Mr. Woods, ignore her. You hand Mr. Woods your steel leather. I need this delivered directly to my father as soon as you return to Edgewater. I don't want the Kansas seeing it first. My loyalty is to your father, my lady, but I have other letters from the Earl that I must deliver before I head home today. I hope perhaps you were in town for longer. With a glance at you, Mr. Woods takes Briar's hand in both of his. I wish I could stay, but I'd best sit out now, if I'm to make my deliveries before dark. Well, why don't we all go? What? To make your deliveries, I've hardly seen any of London except this house. Oh, Claire, have you nothing planned until the opera? No, wouldn't it be fun to go riding together? To deliver letters? Why not? Think of all the people we might see. Briar reaches for Mr. Wood's leather satchel, reading out the names. One of the vest Kent Westonley, Mr. Chambers. Oh, one for Mr. Sinclair. You are certainly welcome to come with me, Lady Claire. His hand brushes Briar's, who hooks his pinky fingers in hers. And I would take any excuse to spend time with Miss Dally. Briar gives you a hopeful look. Please, Claire, it'll be fun. I don't have the diamonds. No. I've had a long day already. I'm really too tired to start riding through the city. Then I shall just have to give Mr. Woods a th thorough for... Stero, farewell, if you could give us a moment, Claire. As you leave the stables, you hear Briar's giggles mixed with Mr. Wood's soft words of endearment. No, that night. Briar is folding your sheets, sighing occasionally as she glances at the window toward the road of Edgewater. So, are things getting serious between you and Mr. Woods? Briar puts in the sheets and picks at the stitching on your bed hangings. I don't know, I mean, I like him, and my parents were certainly consider him a good match. Then, what the hesitation? I just don't know that I'm ready, not until you have made your decision. I want to go with you as you leave Edgewater when you get married. I can't do that if I've made a marriage there myself. Briar. 
You can do what's right for you. I want you to be happy. You love Mr. Woods. Tell him. Don't worry about me. Thank you, Claire, but I just don't know yet. You promise when you do, you won't let me hold you back. I promise. Now, let me see what you decide to wear to the opera. Now? That's not until Saturday. <laughs> better be, uh, better be, better to be prepared early, right? The night of the opera. Miss Parsons bustles through the front door. Dressed in every, e dressed in evening wear and carrying a large basket. Claire! You look lovely. As do you, as always. Is that what you're wearing tonight? I bought you a little gift, sort of a surprise. Before she can say more, you hear a funny whine coming from one of her baskets. The blanket on top wiggles and you see a curly tail poke at the back. Oh my god! That's so cute! A puppy! Come here, you little... He's so sweet! You reach down to help the pug puppy out of the basket. He gnaws on your fingers with stubby, harmless teeth. Grrr. Oh, you are a fierce little warrior, aren't you? Oh, Oh, I'm so glad you like him, Claire. My pug Rosie had puppies a few weeks ago. My sister is saying she absolutely will not keep them in her house another moment. So you thought you would voice one off on me? She keeps threatening to send her groom to dump them in the park the next time I go out. That's not funny, man. Like, that's fucked up. Why would you say that? Why would somebody do that? Would your sister really do that? I think she might, and it would just break my heart. What? That's not really fair. That's not. That's fucked up. Just find homes for the puppy. Jesus. Oh. Rolls the puppy into his back and muscles the fur on his round belly. I found homes for most of them already, but this one's my favorite. She lets the puppy go and he runs toward the door on his stubby legs, barking fiercely. Oh, Yeah, you're a ferocious little thing, aren't you? I so want him to go to you. Then I'll have even more reason to come over every day. Oh, Can I adopt him? I can't adopt him! Fuck! I do He's really sweet, but I can't have a puppy here. I need to be able to go away at all hours and maybe even marry and move away. Aww. I didn't even think. Besides, I'm not exactly alone here. And the McAllister would need to agree to keep him too. True. I'm sure you can find a puppy at home. Of course, I already had someone asking about him. I just wanted to offer. I'll send my coachman home with him right now. Damn it, I wish I had more diamonds. Fuck. Briar comes into the room, smiling at you and Miss Parsons. Miss Parsons looks at the window. Oh, Prince Hammer just pulled out outside. Oh, your mother is definitely looking down on you today. Driven to her old opera house by a prince. You follow Miss Parsons to the door. You and Miss Parsons ride with Prince Hammond in his luxurious ride. I think it's his ride. You both look stunning this evening. You are even more beautiful in the evening than in daylight. And you are just as big a flirt. The prince winks at you and kisses your hand. I am so pleased to be with you the first time you see a show performed at your mother's theater. It will be almost like having her with me again. And what have you been doing since we saw you last, your highness? There is a slight jealous edge to Miss Parsons' voice, and you feel her leg brush yours as if for reassurance. More meetings with Parliament? Indeed. Though the old men are worse than market gossips and far less likely to conclude their business. A shadow crosses Prince Hammond's face. I am ashamed to say I, I am ashamed to say I even heard them talking of you the other day. Me? I do not wish to ruin this evening, but you should know some of the peers are saying you are not your father's blood. What? They said you were nothing but an optimist. Taking advantage of a sentimental old man. What the fuck? Why would I do that? Miss Parsons looked thoughtful. Didn't you tell me that Miss Holloway said much the same thing the other night? The Countess may not be your only enemy. And who knows what Miss Sutton may have told her about me by now. Of course, I spoke on your behalf. I'm glad someone did. 
I told them I know you're quite well. I know you quite well, and there is no doubt that you are a woman of gentle breeding and refinement. Prince Hammond smiles and leans across the small space between the carriage seats, his knees brushing yours, and an impeccable taste. Thank you. I don't care what the rest of them say, as long as you think well of me. The prince draws your hand into his, his fingers stroking yours gently. I would rather be here with you than speak to any lord in London. He lets his fingers drift higher past your waist, spending one brief instant, instant on the bare skin of your arm. There will always be more... There are always people who are small-minded and jealous, but the rumors can have gone far if the Duke of Kellington invited you to share his box tonight. As you gaze out the carriage window, you can feel Prince Hammond's eyes on you. I will show them all that I am a true lady. When you pull up in front of the opera house, Duke Richards is pacing. When he sees Prince Hammond help you from the carriage, his face tightens into a scowl. About time you got here, your highness. I thought you missed the whole show. Do I have the time wrong? The show doesn't start for more than half an hour. So you were planning to claim Lady Clara until the moment it began. And Parsons smiles at the Duke, trying to calm him. We are here now. Indeed, and the show, and the show has yet to. The Duke cuts him off, kissing your hand and pulling you to his side. Lady Clara, the prince may have stolen you for the ride, but now I stake my claim. Your Grace, you catch Duke Richard's arm with a spectating smile. We're all here. There's no need to argue. Shall we take our seats then? The Duke holds your arm, preventing you from walking after Prince Hammond. I'm afraid my box only seats three, and all chairs are spoken for. Oh? Does this leave you without a seat, Your Highness? I hope you were not assuming you would sit with us. Prince Hammond makes an effort to smile, bruh. No, it is fine. I purchased my own seat in the uh, orchestra. Prince Hammond reaches for your hand but stops at the Duke's glare and bows instead. I hope you enjoy the show, Lady Claire. You as well. Yes, enjoy the show, Your Highness. Prince Hammond walks into the theater, pausing to look back at you with longing in his eyes. You touch your finger to your lips, not daring to do more. Only after the prince disappears through the doors of the opera house does the duke's mom release your arm. Shall we? God, this guy, man. You start up and towards the duke's box, glancing at the crowd. Suddenly, Miss Parsons scratch your arm, whispering urgently. Oh, no. What? Don't let him see me. But the vacant whistlingly has already noticed you coming up the stairs. He reaches for Miss Parsons with both hands. The lovely Miss Parsons, you know, I came by your sister's house looking for you, and you were nowhere to be found. Yes, he was definitely intentional. That was definitely intentional. Unconventional? Ah, that's what I love best about you, my girl. He tried to pull Miss Parsons into an embrace, and she ducks under his arm to keep walking. So sorry we can't continue this. Why don't you come by again tomorrow, and I'll still not be there? What was that about? The disgusting old leecher thinks he fancies me. Ahead of you, Duke Richards greets Mr. Chambers and Miss Holloway. Your Grace, what a pleasant surprise. And Lady Clary, a pleasure as always. The Duke gives a big bark of laughter. And what happened to you, Chambers? Miss Holloway's mother roped you into taking her tonight. Mr. Chambers flushes and Miss Holloway's eyebrows knit furiously. Excuse me? I don't think His Grace meant anything personal. Perhaps you would prefer to escort me, Your Grace. I would be a far more appropriate companion for a duke than some common optimist. Fuck this bitch. You want the duke? You can have him. Small freezes on his face. Do not push me too far, Lady Claire. I am not yours to give away. I will push you as far as I can fucking go, bitch. The duke gears you up the stairs, nodding goodbye to Miss Holloway. Enjoy the show, Miss Holloway. Good luck getting Chambers to look away from the Tanners. He lowers his voice to whisper to you. A few of them are rumored to be a bit light in the loafers. And Parsons stiffens at the Duke's com comment and your mouth thins into a grim line. A moment later, you reach the lavish box 
yelling forward straight over the center of the crowd. Miss Parsons looks over the room. You know, I don't believe I see Mr. Sinclair here. Mrs. Sinclair has never appreciated the finer things in life, and tastes are far more base. I can't imagine what you're referring to. I wouldn't expect you to be able to. A sweet young thing like you, let's just say he's probably found something or someone more to his taste. Are you suggesting Mrs. Mr. Sinclair is seeking illicit company? Let's just say I know that he's been certain weekends in London visiting a house of ill repute. How very open-minded of you. Were such things not looked down on in Groversdale? Grover Shear. The Duke waved his hand dismissively. The Mrs. Voice, sorry. I'm going to stop this here and then do a part two, so I'll be right back, guys.